So some of the basic points about doing all these mass count problems, okay? This one is a rhombus. That's a one rhombus has a diagonal of length of 12 units and 16 units. It's rotated 90 degrees and positioned as shown such that the shorter diagonal of the rotated figure is collinear with the longer diagonal of the original with an overlap of four units. What is the area of the overlapping shaded region? Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest hundreds. So the key point of doing this is figure out, basically, these are two same rhombus, uh, the, even though the drawing isn't that good. And uh, the diagonal of, the, of any rhombus form a right triangle. So, you know this particular triangle uh, has angle one and two, which adds up to 90 degrees, okay? The key point here is to realize that once this rhombus is rotated, and this is exactly the same as angle one, because it just is rotated, then it is lined up with di this diagonal. What that means is that this angle one and two is 90 degrees, and this line and this line is perpendicular to each other. So once you realize this is a right triangle, it's pretty, uh, there are many ways, there are several ways of doing this, solving this problem. One way is realize this angle and this triangle is a similar triangle. So let's say A and B, so A over six equals four, this length is four over 10. So you can solve for A. And the same for B, B over for eight is equal to four over 10. So you can solve for A and B. So you can get the area of this triangle, uh, which is two times two, one half of AB. And there are two of them, so you need to add them up to get AB. So once you solve AB, you can get the result. So the area of the overlap shaded region. OK, so and uh, the next problem is about a box contains four chocolates and one fruit chew. Clock and Chloe takes turns drawing a treat out of the box without replacement. Whoever draws the, the fruit chew wins. Clark draws first. First, what is the probability that the Chloe wins? Express your answer as a common fraction. This is a standard prob probability problem. So for Chloe to win the first clock draw must be one of the chocolate. So it has to be four over five. Then Chloe must pick one out of the four, the one fruit out of the chocolate box of the, of the, of the four remaining treats. This is the first step. And then it has to be, uh, there's another probability which is four over five over four. Then Chloe draws three out of four. Then Clark draws two out of the three, two chocolates remaining out of the three treats. Then Chloe draws the final fruit chew. So that's basically, once you add that out, that's all the cases you need to consider for Chloe to win this. So that's the answer, basically. And then another problem is, this is, okay, one. Another problem is just A defined over B defined as something. You know, ask some particular value of A and B. And uh, a matter of just following the operations of the definition and get the value out. <clears throat> the key is just to be careful in your arithmetic. Don't, you know, miscalculate. And then there's a, a sheet of stamps that has four rows of stamps with eight stamps in each row. Sammy wants to separate all the stamps by tearing the sheet in as few tears as possible. So after she makes one tear, she puts the two pieces of the sheet on top of each other before making the next tear. 
What is the fewest number of pairs she can use to get all the stamps separated? So this is a standard recipe, four by eight stamp. So you have to separate from the needle first to get a four by four. Once you get the four by four, it's just a matter of one middle and then overlap, then one middle. So you get a two by two now. For a two by two separate, you need another, just overlap every, every piece, and then another pair of horizontal and another pair of uh, diagonal, or not, not, not diagonal, not diagonal. One column and one row there. So that gives you one by one. So you need one, two, three, four, five pairs to get the all the stamps separate. And the third problem is is this what O N E plus O N E three four P W O. The addition problem showing each letter represents a different digit between one and nine in parentheses. E and T represents five, six, six, respectively. What did it does N represent? Okay, so six, six. This O is a two. Okay, so two, 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 two. There must be one carried over. Okay, so there's one here. So for n between one and nine, right? Six and five. So the n must be over, let's say, over five to, to, to carry over, right? So n greater than five. It can be six, so it's seven, eight, or nine. Nine plus nine plus one gives you nine. So w will be nine, which is not allowed, okay, because that will be the same numbers for n and w. So 9 plus 9. 8 plus 8, 16. Plus 1, 7. Which gives here 1, yeah, which gives 5. So this is okay. 7, 7 plus 1 will give you 5, which will conflict with t, so that's not okay. So n equal 8. This is just to uh, throw out all the possibilities and get the result out. And then four kittens in a certain letter, which include Billy and Peaches, are either fluffy or sleep or they're not friends with one another. Billy is a fluffy kitten, has seven more fluffy friends than sleep kitten friends. How many more fluffy friends than sleep friends that sleep kitten peach peaches have? So Billy F has this is a Venn diagram problem, right? Fluffy and sleep. Oh there's no probably no overlapping actually. So it has seven more fluffy friends. Seven more, in the seven more than sleek friends, including F, right? So, no, so fluffy minus seven equals S. This has a peach meaning, okay? That's Billy. So for peach, it will be, it will have basically It has to add one more of Billy to this problem to get eight. And then he need to reduce himself from this side. So he must have nine more fluffy kitten friends. Because he has to add one to fluffy and remove one from sleep. So 
that leaves a difference of two. So he got not he has nine more Fafi friends than Sleek friends than for Peach. Okay. So five. Problem five. Marcia wants to estimate the total weight of the fan in her sandbox. She has a drinking glass whose interior is a cylinder with diameter two inches and height four inches. The glass weighs four point one ounce in empty. After she fills the glass with sand, the weight of the glass is 14.8 ounces. So the sand is 14.8 minus 4. If the sandbox is a rectangular measuring 6 feet by 4 feet and the average depth of the sand is 6 inch, what is the total weight of the sand in the sandbox? First your answer is a whole number to the near east 100. So this is basically a density problem, right? So the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times half. This is for the cylinder, okay? And for the sandbox, it's a rectangular shape. So it's, it's a box, right? So it's a times b then times the height. So you just need to calculate, calculate out the volume of each of them and then use this to divide by the volume of the calendar. That gives you the density of the sand. Then use that density of the number times the volume of the box, which will give you the weight of the sand in the sandbox. So it should be straightforward. I mean, the mathematics should be straight straightforward. It's just a number of calculation you have to be careful about.